other manners, we will be looking at OJSD and how we could have capitalized on that movement also and how we could have capitalized on that big bullish movement. Hey guys, so once again, I only trade gold between 12 and 4. So I always look at what's happening on the day, on the time. So here we could see price is coming to a downside, forming a high low, and then forming a lower high, just going into the session. Then price closes below that area of supply. And then from there, I'll be taking a short position. Pretty simple, 350 point stop loss. This is the actual trade that I shared on my Instagram as well. And then once we get to 350, I move it to break even. Once we get to 700, I take profits off the table. So then once again, we don't really care about what's happening after that. We're looking at the next day. So then at the next day, we could see prices pushing into that level. But if we'd actually drop down to lower time frames, and that's the key thing, it's about what's happening today. So where a lot of people, what they will do is they will probably take the buy position over there, which is something that you can do. And this is something that I did as well. If you guys go on my Instagram, I took the buy position because we had a break of structure. But that's why rules is such an important key factor to your trading. Went 350 points into profits, I moved my stops to break even, and then price came to a downside and took out my position. So this obviously led to obviously a trade that's outside my time frame. So I would just take a break even. But what you could have done as well is just identify the double top over there. Once you got taken out, just take a short position. And this is actually what I did. I just took a short position, same principle. And then obviously looking to scale out on the 700 time frame. Then once again, we need to understand price comes into the 12 o'clock session. We are sitting at this key area of demand and simple approach, just the same thing. 350 point stop loss or 35 pip stop loss, 700 points trying to scale out of this position. Um, pretty simple, just looking at what's happening. We're on a support area, key buying area, daily area, and we're just looking to scale in on that position. Then coming into the next session, we have a big bearish candle. So at this point, what I would have done is obviously identify that buying level over there. And that's probably where I would have taken a trade. So I would have taken a long position, most probably in that range. Same principle, 350 point stop loss over there and then a 700 point target. So this is exactly what I would have done because I would have seen that triple bottom lining up and the same thing. And the only way you can make this trade better is having buy position stacked a little bit lower, but otherwise than that, you're gonna go into a little bit of a drawdown and then price will eventually play out. Then price went all the way up into new highs. So we could see prices rejecting over there. So this is where we need to jump to the high time frames because we need to understand, is this something that it's selling from? For me, immediately, I will see there's not anything to work with. So you can use your FIB extension, and that will show you how to actually scale in on a trade going into new highs. So you could have taken that short position to the downside. It's not something that I would have done. Um, just like the previous one, I prefer if there's a double top or something that's indicating that there's buying pressure. Then from there, we obviously could have traded the pullback into our 61 to 78% zone. But due to it being outside my time frame that I execute trades on, I would not have taken that position. Okay, so first of all, we're always starting on the daily. We can see how the week ended. Uh, we had Friday over there. So already here, we had a low, 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 high, low, low, high, high. But after a high, high, we still need the high, low confirmation for price to tell us we're going to the top side. So going into a week like this, I usually know that we're looking for pullback trades. So that's when I drop to the lower time frames and I try and identify how we could capitalize on that. So then we move into that key level, psychological level of 750 resistance over there, multiple levels of confluence, okay? So then I'm looking for high, 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 low. There we have a break of structure over there. On that break of structure, I'm gonna be looking for a short position over there. I've explained this multiple times where price rejects and then comes for a second leg, pushes to the top side, quite bullish to scare our traders and then eventually drops to the downside. So what I always do once again, especially if I'm trading against the trend, I'll have sell orders stacked in there. So if price goes against me, I'll keep selling. Then price went to a downside, kept fluctuating, and then eventually forming that left shoulder head, right shoulder formation as well, going into Monday morning. And then from there, we have that push to the downside. So when we finally come into Monday morning, price is already breaking this structure over there. We have that low, uh, high low position over there. And once price trade broke that structure, broke that structure, we know we're looking for sales. So there's selling pressure over there. 
if you add your Fibbin, we're going to see it's at the 61. So we have a point of confluence over there. And that's where we would have been looking for short positions once again on that specific area. Going into that level, we can see spinning tops. We can see hangman candles, so multiple candlestick indications for that short position. But then we need to understand that that was only a pullback trade, so we can't look to swing it to a downside. So from there, I drop to the higher time frames. I add my FIB from my low to high, and I identify there's a 61 to 78% FIB. So what I will now do is obviously try and capitalize and see where I can find confluence on that specific level. So there we had a big bearish candle. After that, that I won't be looking for buys. Then the hangman candle. So after that, the hangman candle on the bottom of a trend, I will be scaling down to the 1H. And once again, use my confluence to see how I could capitalize. So there we have a lower, low, lower high break of structure. And then I'm going to be following the same thing that I did on the other side. A little bit of a bigger stop loss. Targeting the higher levels and then adding buy limits within that range. And if price dips against me, I'm going to buy again, buy again, opening myself up to a perfect 1 to 5 risk reward ratio. Thanks for everyone that is watching and supporting. I hope to see you guys on the next one.